In four years, a version of this British aerospace satellite could be orbiting 22,000 miles above the Earth, and a single beam from this dish could be sending a perfect television picture to every home in the United Kingdom and a considerable part of Europe too. What sort of programmes will they be watching? Eventually, direct broadcasting by satellite, or DBS, will allow the reception of programmes from all over the world, thus making a reality of the global village foreseen by the late Marshall McLuhan. But the first British venture in DBS, which could be operating in three or four years, is expected to offer just two extra television channels. Both of these will originate from within Britain, and it's been widely predicted that tomorrow Mr Whitelaw will award control of both channels to the BBC. But how will this latest breakthrough in communications actually work? How expensive will it be? Above all, do we really want to watch direct broadcasting by satellite? Gavin Scott now reports. In the beginning, the marvels of science brought us a single BBC television broadcasting channel, linked the nation up in a totally new way, and provided us with the historic spectacular of the coronation. Then the marvels of advertising brought us ITV, but more than a decade was to pass before there was a third set of programmes to choose from, BBC Two, soon in colour, and a further 15 years before Channel Four appeared on the horizon. Even as we wait now for its advent, however, the technological pressure is building up for a real revolution. 22,000 miles above the Earth, satellites are poised, ready to pour down upon us a cornucopia of television programming of every imaginable variety. Even now, it's possible to pick up a weather report from Saudi Arabia, make a small adjustment to your receiver and watch current affairs from Zaire, twiddle the knob again and find another weather report, this time from the Sudan, and finally settle back to an evening's viewing with Russian television's answer to Jan Leeming, Tatiana. It's possible, that is, if you happen to be a dedicated satellite buff like Steve Burkill, who started experimenting in his back garden in Sheffield years ago and is now one of Britain's experts on just how much you can pull out of the ether if you have the right equipment. Taking all visible satellites, lease services and occasional TV, there's probably something of the order of uh, a dozen or maybe 15 programmes available each day, 15 separate feeds of television. Do you think people realise just how many satellites there are up there from which they could potentially pick up signals if they had the right equipment? Oh, generally, no. People see satellite TV as something way in the future. Um, I produced a chart here which... Um, uh, lists all the satellites that are up there, communication satellites currently operating in geostationary orbit, and uh, there are maybe 20 visible from this location, several of which carry television full-time. But it's not television uh, intended for the viewer at home. Steve Burkill is eavesdropping on international transmissions between broadcasting organisations. His work simply demonstrates what could be available once there are satellites up there sending out programmes for us all. Yes, you are with Look North, and that was the start of today's Russian television news from Moscow, picked up by satellite in a back garden in Sheffield. Good evening. Well, as you may have heard, the BBC has today been nominated to run both domestic satellite channels when they come to Britain in the next few years. And one of the country's leading experts on satellite television is an ex-BBC engineer from Grenoside in Sheffield in South Yorkshire, who is a regular viewer of Russian and other foreign programmes. Thirty-five-year-old Steve Burkill, who used to be transmitter manager at Home Moss, is going to America soon to work for a big satellite firm who've adopted one of his many ideas. Whereas his next-door neighbour has the conventional greenhouse at the bottom of his garden, 
The end of Steve's lawn looks like something from Goonhilly Down. An eight-foot diameter dish receives TV signals which have been bounced off satellites 22,300 miles into space. A low-noise amplifier, the type used by Americans to intercept cable network programs distributed by satellite, condenses the very weak signals that Steve receives. Inside the living room, a receiver decodes the signals, and it's here where Steve's skill is employed. To deal with Russian programs, this receiver has had to be modified, and very soon the entire system is to be marketed by a London firm. Another receiver, entirely of Steve's own design, can receive Arabic programs. A further modification will provide the sound. The quality of the picture received here in a Sheffield suburb puts Steve Burkill ahead of his increasing number of rivals, who've yet to match this quality. When Britain starts its own domestic service, bouncing programmes off one of the hundreds of satellites in space, the receiving equipment will be smaller and cheaper. You'll have to be fairly well heeled to watch Mr Brezhnev on Russian television whilst the Russians themselves are speculating about whether he ought to be replaced. But it does open a brand new world. Well, there we are, Steve, back to the Russian news. But what choice of viewing do you have here at home? There are a number of uh, satellite feeds which are used by um, different countries, Middle East and African countries, um, for their own internal television relay, getting the programmes out from the TV centre to the, to the regions, because it's cheaper to get it out by satellite than it is to build a, a long terrestrial network through the bush or the desert or whatever. So we have Saudi Arabia, we have Sudan, we have Algeria, Nigeria, Zaire, so on and so forth. We have Spain, um, France is using it for an overseas transmission, and several channels of Russian TV. So you can scan most of the world to our east? To our east, yes, and some to the west. Cuban TV as well is, is occasionally up on satellite. And of course there are experimental transmissions from satellite television, the British company that is, that is going to start a service to Europe very shortly. What about the equipment? I mean, you've got a fairly large dish in the garden. Does that create any problems? Not really, no. It's, uh, I worry about it when the wind blows too hard, but it, it's an eight-foot dish, and it's, it is, of course, rather larger than, than what we will need, what the average viewer is going to need for direct broadcast satellite when it comes along. What kind of equipment are we going to need? It's going to amount to something very much more compact. Again, it's going to be a, a, an antenna, an aerial, which will take the form of a dish, It'll be a small dish, two to three feet in diameter, and it will have a, a piece of microwave electronic equipment mounted on it, a head unit, it will then cable into a second unit which will sit on top of the TV set or underneath it in the home, just plug into the back and treat it as a normal TV signal. Now when it goes on the market, the kind of equipment you've got is going to cost between four and five thousand pounds, which is obviously a rich man's toy. How much is the domestic receiver going to cost? Right, estimates have varied, but uh, between 150 and 500 pounds have been suggested, perhaps about the same as the cost of a colour TV. So is this then the future for television? Oh, I think so, yes. There's, there's obviously there's a, a saturation point on terrestrial systems which the satellite um, leaps way above and enables many more channels to be uh, accessed by any individual receiver. Russian top of the Popsky. Общественную деятельность и большой вклад в дело укрепления дружбы между народами Советского Союза и Португалии. Президиум Верховного Совета СССР наградил его орденом дружбы народов. Помнится, когда Фернандо Лопеш Граса вручали этот орден, это было пять лет назад в Советском посольстве в Лиссабоне. Композитор был очень растроган. Буквально до слез растроган и говорил теплые слова признательности в адрес нашей страны, нашего народа, большим другом, которого он является. Well, this is the 21.5 west until sat, and I can see Brazil and Sudan in that position. Down the band, we can see Saudi Arabia on the lowest transponder on this satellite. They're on program already. And the sort of signal level that uh, 
even the eight foot dish is, is too small for at present. Moscow Channel 1, this is a political comment program called Today in the World. The other two channels on this satellite, is, uh, there's one there which is taking um, football. Northern Hemisphere Beam is taking a different feed of football, an indoor 